And Alex, I'm excited to talk about this first one. This this first running back. As a guy, his, his name is getting dragged through the mud on the timeline, even in the Discord. And he's been one of my biggest buy lows all offseason in Dynasty. Yeah, I mean, Miles Sanders for the Philadelphia Eagles is far and away one of the toughest running backs to pin down. To me, Miles Sanders does feel like a little bit of a trap this wow. season. I do see the upside. I do see that potential outcome. I'll get into that, but Steph, first, I wanna hear your take on Miles Sanders and his current ADP of 401, 37th overall, the RB19 off the board. I will admit it's good value, but I wanna hear your take on Sanders and if you're drafting him at the beginning of that fourth round. Um, beginning of the fourth, and, and these ADPs are coming from underdog fantasy, which is half point PPR. I'd be willing to take Sanders in a PPR league. I mean, early to mid third round. So I'm smashing wow. the ADP. Last year, he finished at RB18 in fantasy points per game, and he's being projected RB19 already. So in, in last season, I'll talk about the situation here in a minute, but we should project this guy to continue to ascend. Still a 24-year-old running back. Again, a dynasty buy in all formats for me. I've been preaching about that all offseason, and he's one of the prototypes of running back that I love. It's, it's this DeAndre Swift... Aaron Jones, Alvin Kamara, to a lesser degree, it's it's why I'm excited for for guys that you don't like, like Chase Edmonds, and, and why I'm so excited for Travis Etienne coming in this rookie class. It's it's this explosive, slippery running back that's efficient through the air, efficient on the ground. They give you a high floor in fantasy with pass catching volume and goal line work, and, and it's everything you want. We don't want the between the tackles grinders that are getting carries between the 20 yard lines. And I think there's a recency bias with Miles Sanders right now. So let, let's go over his 2020. So he was hurt last year. He was playing banged up. He was the whole engine of the Philadelphia Eagles offense, their entire offense with and without Jalen Hurts. He was top 10 in routes run. He was sixth amongst all running backs in opportunity share, which just is a, a percentage of combined carries and targets. And now this year, he's competing with Carrion Johnson, who's just totally washed. We have Kenny Gainwell, who, you know, I liked him coming out uh, of college, coming out of Memphis. I know he opted out last year, and I think that's why he did fall in the draft. He was criminally slept on by the NFL, but he, he's a scat back at best when you have a player like Miles Sanders there. You got Boston Scott last year, was, was already relegated to a pure scat back role when Miles Sanders was in the lineup. And now Doug Peterson is gone. The running back by committee gospel evangelist is gone from Philadelphia. We have to keep that in mind here because there's questions. I see people saying I'm fading Sanders because I don't know if he's going to get the workload. What are you talking about? He, he already showed he was getting that last year. Let me tell you this though. Yes, Doug Peterson is gone, but their new head coach is Nick Sirianni, former offensive coordinator from the Indianapolis Colts. The guy who led yep, tertiary yep. running backs like Naheem Hines and Jordan Wilkins to a combined 170 plus carries and 92 targets in 2020. So I get, I, I'm with you. Doug Peterson's gone, but Nick Sirianni coming from Indy could implement that, you know, Jonathan Taylor, Naheem Hines type of split between a guy like a Miles Sanders and a Kenny Gainwell, a Boston Scott, a carry on Johnson coming in for some of those, those passing downs and giving him a blow. So I'm with you. I think overall it's an upgrade for this offense, for this coaching staff, but I don't think it's all, you know, going down this workhorse narrative for Miles Sanders um, just right off the bat, like an automatic done deal. Yeah. The, the great point on the new coaching staff. Um, the, the biggest thing for me within that is the talent. And if look at Joe Mixon last year, you know, a lot of guys are willing to take Joe Mixon as an RB1 this year. And even though last year, it's like you were willing to overlook Giovanni Bernard taking up pass catching volume, third down drives, even getting in the goal line, uh, a few red zone touches. Like to me, it's, 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 a, it's a Joe Mixon, Giovanni Bernard situation from last year, which does not make me fade Joe Mixon. That does not make me fade Miles Sanders. I think Sanders has the same high floor, primary back upside on a weekly basis, if he if he pops off, and we did see some pop games with Jalen Hurts in the lineup, Miles Sanders came out hot last year because he's good at football. He's been good at football since he went absolutely nuclear 
as a junior at Penn State. He was making huge plays through the air in college, almost 1,300 yards from scrimmage at age 21 in a Power 5 conference, has the second-round draft capital. Things were rocky, though, last year. And I, I mentioned earlier, he was playing hurt, and, and he missed week one. He literally came mm-hmm. into this season and missed me- week one and still finished as an RB2 in fantasy points per game. And this makes me believe that he played a lot of 2020 hurt. But even despite that, he was the RB16 from weeks two to five where you start to see Carson Wentz crumbling, crushing this offense. He had game after game with less than 200 yards, throwing interceptions. And then Miles Sanders breaks off this huge run in week six against the Ravens, suffers a knee injury on a 60-yard breakaway run, would have made it to the end zone. He misses week seven and week eight, comes back after the bye week, immediately gets thrown back into the RB1 workhorse role, had over 17 touches for two games straight. Then we see Carson Wentz completely crumble over his last four starts. It was brutal for Miles Sanders. Like he had the injury, he had the crumbling quarterback situation in Philadelphia, an offense that was lacking weapons in the receiving game. We had Dallas Goddard getting hurt. We had Jalen Ragor, like, coming in out of, like, COVID list and injuries and stuff. Like, it was just nasty. Alshon Jeffrey was getting snaps. That that should tell you everything you need to know about this offense. And then when Jalen Hurts comes in for Carson Wentz, breathes some life back into this offense, what do you know? Miles <laughs> Sanders, a.k.a. Saquon Barkley Light, Jeez. is back to his old ways. He's putting up 29, 10, and 17 fantasy points over his last three games of the season with Jalen Hurts. He gets shut down in week 17 after the Eagles go into, you know, tank mode. We all know about the legendary move of, of pulling Jalen Hurts for Nate Sudfeld in week 17 by Doug Peterson. There were, There's so many reasons to hate Miles Sanders based on his 2020, but I think there's so many reasons to like him because he was hurt last year. He was still top 10 in yards per touch, commanded a 12% target share. I, I think at worst, he's an efficient pass catching back. Mm-hmm. that can see 14 plus carries a game like he did last year. And you add in some goal line work in there too. Yeah. I mean, last year you've laid it out was worst case scenario for Miles Sanders. And when I was digging into the stats a little bit, I was honestly shocked to see that he ran for five yards to carry. Like I thought he was far more inefficient than he was. And when I saw how actually solid he was given everything crumbling around him, given the injury, I will admit I was a little bit surprised. So it was worst case scenario in a lot of ways in 2020, which is a reason to like Sanders because to your point, this could be a great value pocket for him right now as we head into 2021. When we were talking about Travis Etienne in the off season, you know, one of the biggest takeaways with him was he was scoring a majority of his touchdowns from outside the red zone, breaking away big plays and getting six points up on the board. Miles Sanders was 37th in the NFL in red zone touches. He only had three goal line carries, and he still had six touchdowns on the season while hurt in a busted Carson Wentz offense. I I just, I see him as an exceptional player. You may think to fade Sanders with, with Jalen Hurts being a rushing quarterback, and Lamar Jackson's really drove this narrative home over the last few years, and and maybe so with Jalen Hurts, but last year, When you look at the games, play with Jalen Hurts, five targets, two targets, six targets, averages out to 4.3 targets per game. To me, Miles Sanders is a shoe-in for 65 targets, if not close to 80 targets. When you have the Eagles getting into these shootouts in the NFC East with an offensive line that should be coming back healthy, brought in Devonta Smith to help the offense. I think Jalen Regor can be a fine number two option, could potentially ascend this season. Dallas Goddard's a great tight end. So I think this team's going to have their back against the wall, probably not going to win many games. And, and to me, like that offense is, is like the Arizona Cardinals over the last few seasons where they're so fun to watch. They don't win too many games. They're probably not going to make the playoffs. But Miles Sanders, perfect RB2 this year. And, and when I'm looking at drafts that I've done in, in you know, these 12-team PPR redraft leagues, I'm starting to lean starting my drafts running back, wide receiver, running back, or even running back, tight end you know get Darren Waller back of the second and then get running back again there at the turn because you have Clyde Edwards-Alaire, DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins, Chris Carson 
all is these fine RB2s, great RB3s in these 12-team leagues. So this, this is a value to me on Miles Sanders in the third round. You can buy him up because the recency bias is pushing his value so low. I'll admit to you, the value is good. And I like Sanders as a player. I mentioned the yards per carry last season. Looking at the stats, I mean, he was fifth amongst running backs in yards per carry with 5.3, behind only J.K. Dobbins, Nick Chubb, Aaron Jones, and Derrick Henry. And that was behind that beat-up, crumbling offensive line that struggled so much at times um, in 2020. So I'll admit, like, the upside's there with Miles Sanders, but there's just so many red flags associated with him that, to me, like, round, end of round three, early round four – is still too early in drafts to be taking guys with this many red flags. And to your point about roster construction, I think he's fine maybe as an RB2. Ideally, an RB3 It's probably not going to shake out that way. But if I can get running backs in round one and two, and maybe even round three, you know, two running backs in the first two rounds, and I'm coming back to a Miles Sanders, in that same range, I just like the receivers way more. I think they're way safer. I like the Robert Woods... Chris Godwin tier of wide receiver late round three early round four so ideally really I'm starting out running back running back and I'm taking a Robert Woods and a Chris Godwin on that three four turn to be my two starting wide receiver so for Sanders to me it's just the ADP is okay but I just like so many guys going around him he's right in that Josh Jacobs range you can actually get Josh Jacobs almost a round later than Miles Sanders and I think they're going to end up pretty close in my projections as well and I've mentioned some of the red flags with Sanders already, but I'll talk about a couple more. First, are those signals that the Eagles sent to Miles Sanders by bringing in competition? You mentioned like Carrion Johnson, Kenny Gainwell. They still have Boston Scott. No, I don't think any of those guys are significant threats from a talent perspective. But when you look at a team that brings in Jordan Howard to be a potential goal line back, that brings in Kenny Gainwell in the draft oh. that has a receiving skill set, Brings in Carrion Johnson to be, you know, a backup, occasional rotational player for the backfield. And they still have Boston Scott. Like those signals to me are just saying we don't trust Miles Sanders to shoulder the load and to stay healthy in this offense. And maybe I'm putting together some false narrative here. And I do think that one of these guys, probably Jordan Howard or Boston Scott or Carrion Johnson, <laughs> any of those three could get cut before the season, which could give us a little bit more clarity with this backfield. But to me, like if Miles Sanders was their guy, they wouldn't be feeling the need to bring in all these different skill sets to Philadelphia. So that is a little bit shaky for me and it, it muddies the water a little bit. The next concern is the offensive line. And I will say they are better on paper than they were in my head. They were the 19th rated line per pro football focus. Take that for what you will, whether you like their content or not in 2020 and they're ranked 17th heading into the 2021 season. So they're not like a bottom third unit, but they're not in the top half either. And they have a lot of older veterans that have struggled with injuries. They have guys like Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey, Brandon Brooks, these guys in their 30s on the offensive line, and they're very thin as well. So if one or two of these guys goes down again, this offensive line is immediately looking brutal once again. Now, I know they brought in Landon Dickerson in the draft, but he struggled with injuries as well um, throughout his college career. So the offensive line... I wouldn't say it's as big of a detractor as people think, but it definitely has cause for concern because if one or two things go sideways with that O-line, Miles Sanders could be looking at an uphill battle. And lastly, I think the the third red flag for me is just the offense as a whole. We don't know how it's going to look. Jalen Hurts hasn't given us a huge sample size. I know you mentioned the receiving volume that Sanders got when Hurts was the quarterback, which is fantastic, but the sample size is so small I don't know that that's mm. going to be Jalen Hurts' tendency throughout 2021 and into his NFL career because you did mention the Lamar Jackson narrative of not checking down to the running back when you're a rushing quarterback, but we've seen it from just about all rushing quarterbacks in the league. We see it for, we've seen it from Deshaun Watson as well in the past. Kyler Murray will throw it to Chase Edmonds a little bit more than some of the other guys, but a lot of those are designed screens, designed uh, ways to get him the ball. He lines up in the slot a lot as well. So time and time again, we have seen these rushing quarterbacks not check down as much as these pocket passers. And the reason being is because if the pocket's collapsing, if you're scrambling outside of the pocket, a guy like a Phillip Rivers has no option to run. So he has to look for that check down. Where if you're Lamar Jackson, if you're Kyler Murray, if you're Jalen Hurts, you don't have to check it down to Miles Sanders standing five yards in front of you because you have a full head of steam running around the corner to the outside and you have the speed 
to pick up the first down. So that is kind of why that narrative exists. And when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. He did struggle at times um, in 2020. He showed some flashes, but he still only posted a 52% completion percentage. So I do think the new weapons on offense help with guys like Devontae Smith. But this offense could actually be terrible in 2021. We just don't know. So a lot True. of what we're expecting from Miles Sanders hinges on the play of Jalen Hurts. And Jalen Hurts, as a rushing quarterback, is naturally going to take some of that rushing volume near the goal line as well. So I know it sounds like I hate Miles Sanders, but I really don't. I just think there's some risk associated with him in 2021 for where he's going in drafts. I think the risk reward is completely fair. Um, you know, if you end up going early tight end or snag a stud wide receiver in round two, I do think Miles Sanders could be a fine second running back for your roster. But typically that early in drafts, I want more sure things. And I just don't know that you're getting that in Sanders. Yeah, fair, fair points too. And you're right. This offense could be complete garbage. What a fall from grace the Eagles have had yeah. over the last few years since winning that Super Bowl. But one more point to push back is, is we don't need Miles Sanders to be a you know, 80% opportunity share player to deliver for us at the ADP in fantasy. The, the perfect example to me here is Aaron Jones, mm-hmm. a guy who can get 180 carries a season, but he's going to get 65, 70, maybe even 75 targets in a 17-game season to where he can be very fantasy viable. What hurts, to your point, and what is baked into the ADP, why he's going lower and where the risk comes in is, imagine Aaron Jones on the Eagles offense, not quite as appealing. 